Okay, for number seven, we're given a polynomial and we're asked for the zeros. This is a cubic polynomial, so what do I get? The zeros would be when it equals zero. And let me write that down for you. Zero equals x cubed minus x. We typically do this by factoring if we can. So it's gonna be x, and then you get x squared minus one. Now it's a cubic polynomial, expect to see three roots. You get x, x plus one, x minus one. I have three roots. What are the three roots gonna be? Let's write this down. Zero, minus one, and one. These are the three roots. Look at the key, see if they're saying that. They say zero plus or minus one. We got that. Let's do the next one. It says, is f of x an odd function? Let me review that with you. f of x minus f of minus x. Well, let's put f of x down. That's going to be x cubed minus x. Let's write down the opposite of f of minus x. Let's see if they're equal. If they're equal, it's odd. What do you get? Minus f of minus x would be minus x cubed plus x. Let's write this down. What do you get there? x cubed minus x. It's odd. So the answer is yes. Yes, it's odd. Check the key. See if you got that. Yes, it's odd. All right, let's do the next thing. Determine the intervals when f of x is positive. Fairly simple to do. We're going to do it by sign analysis. How do we do that? We list the zeros. What are the zeros going to be? At 0, at 1, and at minus 1. And we're analyzing f of x equals x cubed minus x. Test points. A good test point here would be 2. You're going to plug it in here. What do you get? Well, you know what? You can factor that 2 if you want. x, x plus 1, x minus 1. And you, you could do that. Either one's equally easy, in my opinion. If you plug in 2, though, it's going to be a positive. I'll put this over here. All right, now someone says, what are you going to do over here? Plug in a half. Now, I'm going to say it's probably easier for me to plug in a half here than it is over there. But it's really the same thing, all right? What do you get? Positive, positive, and a negative, which overall is negative. Let's take a test point over here. Minus 1 half. And if you plug that in, again, I would say plugging into the factor form is easier. You get negative, positive, negative, which would be positive overall. And a test point over here, like minus 2, what would you get there? You're going to get a negative number. You plug it in here or there, you're going to get a negative number. So what is the question going to be? Determine the intervals on which f of x is positive. It's positive here, and it's positive here. I'll write that down, and then we'll check the key. So it's positive from minus 1 up to 0, and it's positive, or I should say, or it's positive on the interval from 1 to infinity. Let's take a look at the key, see if we got that. And let's take a look at it. Uh, oh, it's right over here. I'm sorry. Minus 1 to 0, 1 to infinity. By the way, I, I just updated the notes, and I, should, I, I have to update the, the numbers here. You're not going to see these question marks here. I want to point out this is an artifact of LaTeX, and I did not typeset um, um, it more than once, and it's not going to update the thing unless I update it twice. But anyway, it wants me to graph it, and graphing it, relatively simple. I'm not going to say I'm going to get a great-looking graph, but... I want to point out graphing is relatively simple. And we're going to put the zeros down. So I got one at minus one, I got one at zero, and one at one. I want to know from the sign analysis, I know it's positive here. I'll put that down. I know it's negative below minus. Oh, by the way, I also know it's, it's odd. Uh, positive here, I'll do something like this. And it's negative over here. I'm just looking at my sign analysis over there. Clearly odd looking. I like the graph they're doing over here, and the reason that machine did this one, but my graph is sufficiently good. Thank you.